All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, my name is Brian Leonard. I'm one of the product managers at Aviva. So I figured we'd take a little break. You guys in for some really, really good comedy. Start with a joke. Oh, yeah. Mars started a little bit earlier, but we'll keep that ball rolling. So one of the great things about going to these events is to be able to talk to people, like the system integrators, end users, be able to see how they're using our product and making the world a better place. In fact, there was this one user that I talked to recently who was taking our software and making an air freshener that worked with the power of mind control, which made a lot of sense when you think about it. But umps. That was a joke. Uh, Officially, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yes, that's a, that's, that's a nice wave. That's a wave that goes over the crowd. All right, yeah, it gets way better from here. <laughs> On something way more entertaining, Aviva reports for operations, or it's previously known, uh, Dream Report. Uh, so we're effectively owning that, that product now and uh, bringing it into the fold. That's a part of operation control, as you guys have seen. So it, it fits really well. Uh, we've seen that it fits really well with our systems. A lot of customers use it. It's a really simple, easy to use, and rather fun, if you, for lack of a better term, uh, product to use. And so it fits really well with our platform. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So what is a Viva Reports Operation? What do you want in a reporting package? Well, effectively, you want to, you want to take your data, you want to collect it, and, and bring it into a, 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 a system, process it, or take it, parse it in a certain amount, and then present it to a customer, a user, or any particular user. That usually may vary depending on the situation. You may have an operator that wants to do it a certain way or see certain things with it. Maybe if somebody in a business level, they want to see the, the, the data in a, in a different way. So we have different ways of presenting the data automatically. Uh, a lot of this stuff can be done through no scripting. Everything's just done with simple check, check boxes. You want to look at an average for values, just check it, and that's what you want to see. Uh, very little scripting can be done. But if you want to get more sophisticated, there is a scripting engine that can be used to, to process the data and you know, view it in the way you want. So let's talk about collecting the data. So you take it, what do we have? Well, we have over 120 different drivers that are included with the product. So this is stuff that's just built in. You don't have it have really very little configuration, but it's all made for the product. There's open protocols, OPC UA, uh, Modbus, we have uh, MQTT drivers that can uh, take that data and collect it into the, into the system all natively. Um, SQL access, you can just run, you can SQL queries if you want to. That's all included with the unlimited packages. Just view everything that you want to that way. Of course, we have the HMI SCADA and historical archives uh, set up that way. Where, you know, classic Aviva products, even the new Aviva products, OSI or uh, Pi applications. Um, a lot of this stuff we're bring, building on there, we're including asset framework capabilities. Um, we are working on the event frame capabilities to bring that in. So if you're familiar with that process within Pi, that's all going to be done there. All the, all the big players are there, even the little players. Um, are all included in, in the package there. But we want to focus on the Aviva stuff because that's all the best, obviously. Um, but even if you have data that you want to include yeah, manually, we have our web forms that you can go in and bring it in and you can take that data and overwrite it manually or maybe add data that's going to be user input so you could put that in there as well into the web form and then take that and collect it into the system. And even from that point, you could push it back up to your, to your SCADA or historical uh, archives as well. So it's really, really flexible. Okay, once you get your data, how are you going to process it? Well, you can do scripting if you want to, but if you want to get to do things a lot easier, you could just use the multitude of our uh, capabilities here. Things like your minimum values over time, or we even have batch capabilities where it recognizes batches that, you, that, that are set up in your, your, your process, and we'll judge based on everything off of that batch data. So you could do average values over, over the time for the batch, or start and end times. Uh, all the outliers and things like that, alarms, set points, and things like that, they're all included based off of either batch time or just your interval time that you specify uh, override that way. Um, another cool thing we have are SPC functionality. Some people use SPC functions within the applications. This has its, its own set of SPC functionality if you want to just enable it in here. This is another example where people take the data that's collected and they'll run their SPC analysis and then push that data back into another system. You could present it in Insight, or you could present it just locally. You could have web forms where you can interact with the data if you want to, or just have classic, just static forms that way. So great stuff here. And I'll go over a little example of how all this stuff's done and really show the power of having this functionality. Just, again, just check boxes. So the other thing is alarm management. So coming up with the ISA 18.2 standards, of have taken your alarm data and managing it in a way that, that is useful to customers and useful to the users. The things that are already built into the system here, these are, again, a lot of these functionalities also pre-built in. How do you take this information and present it into dashboards and, and reports that you can use it to, to make your system more effective and get rid of nuisance alarms and things that are really useless within an application? So this is all part of that. And there are other tools that you can just enhance real, most ability if you want to in real time. This is a lot of stuff that's meant for things like after the fact, and you can analyze your data after it's all been done. So the drivers are all built in, uh, or divers as a result of the typos, but you can take your data, you could look, you could look at it um, real time, or you can look at it 
uh, post-processing through the reports, static, or through your web reports uh, built in that way. And then you could take it and, again, if you wanted to, process the data and put it back into your HMI application, or put it back into to Insight or Pi or whatever, and process it post um, either manual input, explanations, and things like that, or built, built into the system that way. So here's an example. This is an alarm data. I'm sure you guys are sort of familiar with what this looks like. Super informative, um, you know, classically. But you could take that data and look at your alarms, or you could see, make, some, make some sense out of it. What was your alarm priority? How many al alarms did you get of high priority or whatever? Uh, by your area. You can say you've got your, your, your area breakdown here. And this is all stuff that's just built into the system. There's no scripting done to generate these, these reports. It's all done in, within minutes. Um, your, your, your big hit players here, the, the top 10 of all the different alarms that you've got, just to now uh, analyze, you know, what are your problems? Maybe these things are nuisance alarms. You know, there's even nuisance alarm settings there. How many are you getting within a certain amount of time? Um, by your shift, you can organize it by time frame. And this, in this shift, we're getting a lot more of these type of alarms than the other types of alarms. And so you can work with your, with your teams to figure out what's going on with the system. How do we make it better? All right, so presenting the data. How do we present? Well, there's a couple different options. One of them is, like I mentioned, PDFs. Everybody's used those. Everybody knows them. Those can be done via static. You can store them locally. You can store them remotely. You can put them, you can, you can back them up if you want to. It's all done in, into the system. It all generates automatically or on the fly, depending on your, your circumstances. Another option is the web portal. So this can be done either uh, locally or you can do it through a web capability. Um, the reports that you create can be automatically created and just through no scripting, just create them um, for both of them at the same time, whether you're going through a, a phone or a tablet or something like that, or through your, your, your client, it'll uh, look it, the way that it's meant to be. So there we are, like, like in that way. And once you've got your portal, you could again view your PDFs if you want to. This is an example here of all the different reports that I, as, as this user logged in, can have access to. You can see how many there are. It's kind of hard to see from the back there. But you've got five, let's say, batch info um, reports here. This is the, the, the data that's been collected. And these are the time frames that have all the different um, reports that are available there. And again, they're PDFs. But if you want something a little bit more enhanced, you can take, take the same reports, do a little checkbox, and say, this is designed for the web portal, and that, which then can make them interactable. So you can go in and say, well, this is the alarm data. I want to go in and generate a new report based off of a filter that I've created. So you can go in and have that inter interactive. Some data can be stored and presented live, uh, not really meant to be like super real time. It's more of a little bit of a delay, but it's not really targeted towards a live environment. But it does have the capability of doing that, depending on how you configured it. But again, you can take these dashboards and make them available there with the pens and trends, things like that. You can take it and say, okay, actually, I see this temperature here. What are the last you know, 10 readings of it of, of that particular day? Click on it. It shows you the live data there. You can export that out if you want to. You can look at a trend, things of that nature, and dig, dig in a little deeper. You can also take data in your, in your live reports and take it external sources and put them in. You could take insight information and populate a report based off that way. And again, these can be interacted just like it would be through insight. Videos, things like that can all be imported in that way. Another thing we have is um, um, e-signature capabilities. We've really enhanced the e-signature capabilities for the latest version, where you can create a schedule of a report that says, okay, this person is the first person to contact it for their signature. Once that person's done, the next person is notified, hey, through a text message or whatever, click the link to, to it's your turn to, to sign it. Once they do one, they sign it. And it goes to the next person, et cetera, et cetera. And once it's done, then it gets stored in, in a different format. You have the pre-signature and the post-signature version of the application that way. Um, and then all the, the, the collaborations built into it that way. You can have the, your, your latest things that you need to sign and all the, the latest uh, stuff that you need to do for the day. All right, so this is an example of what it's like. So this is, I warn you, this is very much real, near real time of creating a, a report. So there is typing. So try not to fall asleep. Um, but here we go, so we'll process this. So we're in the, in, uh, the, the report studio. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to, to create a, um, a, a data connection. So right now we're going to connect to historian. So we click that, and along with the, the giant list there, we're going to do historical values. And we're gonna, this is going to be a, a delta type historian value. So we give the name. We're going to tell it the server name. Again, really, really fast typer here. Uh, we'll give it the name. We'll give it the, the authentication method to access the historian server. Once you do that, you test it out, make sure everything works. OK, great, history. Um, what type of data are we going to be collecting it? Because the, the historical data has a lot of different options for collecting it. All the different options are there. We're going to select uh, the delta uh, data retrieval. And there we go. That's pretty much the, the connection uh, configuration for the data connector. Pretty easy. That was all real time there. So now we do that, we're going to create a report. OK, well, there's the sheet there. We give it a name. We'll call it something really exciting, like demo report. And there we go. And then we're going to say, well, how, when are we going to generate this report? Well, every day, we're going to create it, let's say, at 1 AM. Boom, there we go, all done. 
Any other details you want to give it? Uh, for the file format, what are we going to do here? Well, it's going to be a web type report. We're only going to need it for PC. You can do PDF, email, print it directly, um, do it even an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. It can all be done um, individually or do them all at once or whatever. So that was that. And so now we're going to build some content. So here's the sheet. So we create a, a statistical table. We're going to go and say, okay, well, what, what are we going to get our data from? We're we going to get it from that thing we just created, this, the historical data. Connect to that and look at all the different tags available to us here. We're going to do some flows. We're going to take a look. We got the flows for these particular pumps and, and, and the, the temperatures. We want to look, also look at the reaction levels and temperatures, et cetera. And here we are here. These are all the different checkboxes that are available. So after all that data that's going to be collected within that particular amount of time, all of these things are automatically uh, available to you. The maximum values, minimum values, average values, um, all of the, the, the deviations, et cetera, are all just available to you with no scripting. Um, you can override the, the the column data, if you want to make it something that looks more informative, and you can change the appearance, what you want the table to look like, colors, names, whatever, can all just be done um, really simply and easily. Again, just point and click, check boxes, things like that. Really simple, easy stuff. And there it is. There's the data. There, it's all going to be calculated for you. It all adjusts for you. If, it, if the if the um, the particular table that you can use is variable height, you don't have to tell the specific height. It'll automatically just make it for you depending on the amount of data that that's being retrieved. Uh, next thing we're going to do is going to add a chart. So we want to show the, the, a particular trend. If it's static, it'll just show a static trend. If it's, if it's a web base, you can interact with it if you want to. Uh, so we're going to give it some pens to, to select. We'll do some flows. Right there, we'll do only do two. And with pen colors, things like that, you can set them all for you. What the labels do you want to have, et cetera. There go there. Let's see now, well, the, there's, there's the flow meters. What, what are some other information that would go with that? Well, if you're going to do your flows, you maybe want to check and see what your, your pump status is at. So there's maybe pump data that might be of beneficial to you. So we'll select that. We'll kind of skip over this a little bit. But effectively, you're taking ancillary data that, that's going to be associated with it, your flow meters and things like that, and then take the, the associated data, um, put it, make it available that way. And there, that's a quick one. So again, we have our pump data status here. Again, none of this stuff is, is, is done through the scripting. There's all different check boxes. So that's basically it. So in terms of appearance goes, well, you may have a template that you want to use for your particular company. So you can just apply a page template that you've already saved. And that may be a standard that you've got, maybe stored locally or in the cloud or whatever. You can store that there, apply the template, and you're done. Basically, that was the creating uh, a report that shows all this information and, and data all done with no scripting, and it's all done that way. So we are a PDF, our static PDF data. That's that. Now, this would be the, the information that's collected for the time span that you've created. Let's say you want to make it a little bit more dynamic, and you want to, you, so you go to the, the web portal. So we did configure this one to be a web-based one as well. So we start the server. Again, this is all configuring. We enabled the uh, IIS, and now we generated a report for the web, and this is the web interface. Again, this can all be customized if you want to, but here we are. So we have the static um, uh, PDF document, but we want to make something that's more dynamic. So we go to the dynamic part of it and say, okay, well, we're going to define the time frame for, that, for the exact same report that we created, but we want to just change the, the time frame that the report is going to be valid for. And there we go. We created that. And now that's, that's the data for that particular time frame. You can save it, put it in the database if you want to, and collect it that way. Now if you want those to uh, play with the values themselves, we can go into the web version and, and uh, interact with our, our trend here. And just like this data, this can make, make this live, change it around, mix it up a little bit if you want to there, change your particular pens that you've selected based off of the selection you already made. And there you go. There's all your data. Export it if you want to. It's all built into the system. Again, no scripting, no thing, all real time. Pretty easy. Pretty amazing, right? Everybody still awake? Yep. Pretty good. All right. So again, this all comes with a VIA operations control. It's designed to be that, that glue that holds the pieces together. Great. You have you have system platform that works great. Awesome. Everything works. But you want you have historian or school. But then this data is designed to be that glue that holds it all together. This teamwork, the integration studio, uh, it fits really well with the product, and we're really happy to bring it to market. All right, thanks a lot for your time. Here, you're up next.